Hallelujah. Good morning from the hill. That's Mars Hill, that is. Here in good old nap town. Dialing in. Oh, that's right. So let's go over here. Facebook. Get you dialed in here. Get it off of privacy. Okay, we're back on line. Back on line. Get the overhead camera fixed up. Let's hit that. See, that's looking. Uh, can you see that okay? Read that okay? There it is. Looks like we're going to be starting about numbers 15. So let me get this up on my <clears throat> line here. Let's see. All right, number 15. Okay. All right, let's do a little overview. I got my other camera back, the camera that you're looking at now. I, I left my camera stand down at the gospel thing and forgot it. Went down there last week and forgot it again. So after church, Christy and I swung by Eddie's, the house of victory there, and picked it up for him. I hope you all are doing well there. We love you up here on the hill. And we love One Body Ministries. Beautiful. Mike Long, one of our former pastor of mine that used to have uh, a ministry out there off of uh, was it Troy? I'm not quite sure. He had kind of like a biker ministry. It was pretty cool. And I forgot the name of it. Forgive me, Mike, but uh, uh, he ended up uh, uh, for some reason that ministry after so long, he ended, I don't know, for whatever reason uh, he decided to pass on it. And uh, so, uh, but anyway, he ended up at One Body Ministries and that's where Christy got led to and I'm there too so we met and, uh, and now uh, he fills in for our pastor Chris Dunn uh, whenever the Lord leads him and so he always he's never preached a bad sermon it's always a good sermon he's a dedicated ministry minister to a prison ministry he's preached a lot of convicts in his life and a lot of other places I used to sing and play with him down at the uh, when he preached at the mission down there downtown I forget the name of Wheeler we did a gig there together and, and uh, anyway I've known him for a long time I used to play bass for his band when he had his church there uh, I forget the name of his ministry I'm sorry Mike I forgot it but anyway Mike if you're listening uh, we love you praying for you and uh, your wife and we're praying that uh, she's recovering there won't be any complications about her getting her total recovery and that the Lord will probably start opening doors for you uh, pretty soon and that will continue uh, to bring the word of God to uh, the lost and the dying sinners in Jesus name well anyway let's get back to the uh, uh, what I'm talking about here let me go over to the other camera well here we are so, we've been going on about uh, uh, the ministry and other broadcasts uh, for weeks now um, from this book. Now, let's see if I can put it up here for you. There's the camera right there. Okay. 4,000 questions and answers. And uh, it was... Uh, Did you see that time? I don't know if I can change. Let me see. There it is. 4,000 questions and answers. There it is. Okay. And so, here it is right here. And it's got all the different topics and it asks questions, obviously, and answers. So, just a pretty cool little study. Helps keep me on point so I don't go off too far. And, uh, like I say, we've come down here from, uh, from Genesis. Genesis to uh, I'm down here to uh, numbers and we're going to be getting into numbers one thing about numbers when I was a kid and I was curious about the Lord uh, one thing I did they had a big old fat Bible that sat on my grandma's TV the top of it where it collected dust and every once in a while I'd open it up now I'm talking elementary school <laughs> and uh I opened it up and I was fascinated by how big it was and all this strange words and stuff. And I remember I started reading Genesis even when I was a little kid and uh, I got to Numbers and I saw all that begatting 
I couldn't hammer, so I just closed it, and that's as far as I ever got. <laughs> so, if you're in the Lord and you and you're, uh, want to grow in grace, don't let numbers throw you off. It's a pretty cool book, but it's, I wouldn't advise it to, uh, don't discount it, but it's a certain period of time in your spiritual growth that you'll want that book because it's our history. Well, I mean, our history is that the Bible says Jesus is the Father, it's our Father and Lord, Jesus Christ. Meaning that Jesus is Father, it's our Father, the God in heaven, the only and true and living God, and he's the God of the Old Testament. Then when Jesus came on the scene, they made a New Testament, a new will, and we're in that will. Isn't that great? And so now, when Paul writes his epistles, uh, and his epistles, these are revelations of the Gentiles, the revelation of the ministry, he usually starts it off uh, to, uh, uh, to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God and Father part, and uh, that would be uh, the God of Israel, and the Father of our Lord, which would be Jesus, and the body of Christ and Israel are kind of, uh, they're, they're mixed up in here in this Bible, in one part and the other part, and that's why he's called God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, because of that situation. So that's why uh, numbers is important. The God part is about the history of Israel and his relationship to humanity. And uh, that's why it's interesting about knowing the Old Testament stuff happened to it, because the Bible says there's things that could happen that happen to them that could somehow, we didn't watch out, could happen to us too. These things it says for mentioned. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to our text here. I want to say, uh, how are you today? Have you got you a cup of coffee? I got mine. Hmm. I'm on my second cup. It wasn't as good as my first, but I'll just have to do for right now. So let's go over here and see some questions. And looks like here. Let's read about the Sabbath breaker. I'm going to read through some of these questions and I'll go back uh, on the Bible over here. See, and uh, we'll see what the Bible says about it. On what sin was a man found guilty about this time? Gathering sticks upon the Sabbath day. It says here in 2, he was stoned to death at God's command. God felt like him and he broke that law. Uh, you could, if you went out and you wanted to start a fire and it was cold out there in the wilderness and you gathered your sticks on the Sabbath day that was considered work then you broke the law and therefore put yourself in jeopardy of being stoned to death for gathering wood for your fire the premise being have enough about yourself to gather wood uh, on uh, the previous day so you wouldn't have to do any work so to speak Third question says, was this not too severe? Well, this commentator says, no. The people had not learned obedience, and they must learn. Well, that still happens with us today when you come to the Lord. Also, as though God was their only king, such disobedience was virtually treason. Uh, as you'll become to know, if you have in the other books, that uh, God's desire was to be God of Israel and have him a nation that would be a seed and a a witness to the other pagan nations in the world about their God, Israel's God is God, and there is no other gods beside him, and that you found out when you battled against Israel that the God supernaturally brought victory for Israel, and you found out that if you would follow what Deuteronomy, I think it's 12 or 20, I'm not quite sure, if you do these things, you'll be blessed. If you didn't, you'd be cursed. And so you could enter into a covenant and be an Israelite, uh, you'd get your foreskin cut off, and then you would use Moses' sacrificial system about the altars and the, the high priests and stuff like that. If you come in to, the, to be one of them, uh, that's what you would have to do, and you would get the blessings, but you would get the hard stuff too. They, you, you couldn't pick up sticks or you'd get killed, stoned for doing it, so it had its good and bad and ugly. So... It says here, and uh, how had God not threatened this punishment for the breaking of his command? 
Let's see what his verse says. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is a holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it, like picking up sticks on Saturday, it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does the work thereon, that soul shall cut, be cut off from among his people. So they can put you outside the camp or stone you. What did the Lord order the people to make that they might keep his commandments and remembrance? A blue fringe on the borders of their garments. That's what the priest wore. Uh, this is sort of, I guess, a garment. It reminds me of when Jesus was on his earthly ministry and he was passing through. Uh, a woman uh, with the issue of blood said, if I just may touch the hem of his garment. And uh, she got to him and just touched the hem of his garment. And, it, and Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? He says, for I perceive that virtue has gone out from me. Which shows us, I learned from this, that faith touches the Lord, not our personality, not our need, not our goodness, not our badness. You have to touch the Lord in faith, grace through faith in Jesus' name, for him to hear your prayers and sometimes answer them, answer, answer them if it's according to his timing. Okay. Who were Korah, Dathan, and Abraham? Korah, a Levite, the others Reubenites, who rebelled against the regulations for the priesthood. Okay. What did Moses propose for these men to do? That they should come to the tabernacle, burn incense to see which one or not God would accept as priests. So they had a beef that only Miriam and Aaron were in the mix. Okay. And that these were just common Israelites and they wanted some of the authority and one of the I could understand why they thought, says, okay, is Moses only, God only talking to Moses and Aaron? Well, he had been, yeah, wake up. But they, they got, you know, the enemy got in them and they wanted to be curious and so they started causing problems. Well, what happened there in verse 8? Let's see here. In what way did God at once manifest his displeasure? He didn't, he didn't have a conversation with him. He says, he commanded Moses and Aaron in the congregation to keep away from the rebellious company and their dwellings when the earth opened up and swallowed them. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 man, did you get that? They murmured against the authority of Moses and Aaron, and guess what happened? God didn't, didn't, didn't mess with him. How he showed his displeasure? He didn't come down and try to talk and counsel with them. He just caused an earthquake, and the earthquake opened up, and down they went, and that's where they are to today in the pit of hell because they, they murmured against God's authority. How large a company did the men have and what became of them? There were 250 in a fire from the Lord, consumed them. So here's another one. I don't know if they're the same. This one says the fire from the Lord consumed them, and the other one says the earth opened up and swallowed them. So I don't know uh, if it was it's describing the same event or not. Okay, how did still the murmurings of the people? The people then charged Moses and Aaron with killing the people. Oh, listen to this. Wow. So how did God again appear to vindicate his honor of his own appointed priesthood? Above 14,000 were struck down with the plague. So let's get this picture here. They're crying to God. Excuse me. They're crying to God about his pick for of Moses and Aaron authority. So, what does God say? God says, you tell the people to stay away from these people and their families and, their, and the people and their fellowship, that church, that denomination out there in that wilderness. So they separated, and next thing you know, the Bible says the earth opened up and swallowed them. Yeah, that's right. They went down to hell. Then it says the Lord, the fire consumed them. So I don't know if this was... Uh, the fire was the fire coming up out of the earthquake pit or what, but I don't know. It doesn't really go into it. So get this, and still they complain. So in this case, Moses, I mean, God sent a plague and killed a bunch of them. How many did say he killed? Let's take a look at it. It says, uh, verse 11, they were struck down with the plague. 14,000. So more people died about murmuring 
about how God dealt with, took care of problems down there than the problem was originally. First it was 250 and their families, an earthquake and fire, and now it's a plague because they, they are still murmuring. Uh, they got start, uh, you know, murmuring with Moses and Aaron and killing the people of the Lord. Well, I guess they God didn't consider the people of the Lord. Oh! So they weren't uh, in unity. They weren't in time with Moses and Aaron. And so they caught another thing. They still didn't get their lesson. And you'll see that this is a never-ending perpetual problem with, with Israel up until this day and until Jesus returns. They're continually going to be. Of course, then, they did not have Holy Spirit like we do. We have Holy Spirit that helps us. And, and we have grace that strengthens us. So it's, let's don't think we're much better here than this bunch. We've got a lot better things. We've got the name of Jesus. We've got the blood of Jesus. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit. We have grace. They didn't have any of that stuff back then. Okay. Okay. What was done, 13, with the censers of the rebels? That's a little incense thing. They were beaten into plates to cover the altar as a memorial for their sin. Wow, let me get this picture. Mm. They took the instruments, I guess maybe that's what you call a phylactery. Phylactery is little things that all the priests and stuff need to make up, and to make up their little get up in their gown and everything. <clears throat> and so they took what was left of them I couldn't believe this. I guess after the, these must have been the ones that were struck down with the plague because when the earthquake opened up and swallowed them, they didn't have time to set their stuff aside. It took, they all went down. They went down to the uh, heart of the earth where hell is and where Abraham's bosom is, but that's another story. But they're still there today wishing they never opened their mouth about Moses and Aaron. I hate to laugh, but it's a sad, sad thing. And it just shows the reverence of God back then. He really had to be reverenced. And there's one thing we need today. We need, to, because of grace, we feel we don't, shouldn't revere God as much as they did back then. He hasn't changed at all. He's still sensitive about stuff like the only thing about Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And that when you when Jesus saves you, he places you inside himself, and that's why you can cuss, still steal, do all kinds of things after you get saved. You shouldn't do it, but people do it. I did it, okay? I've had I have my moments. So far, uh, I'm doing pretty good, but God's always gave me grace to get back on my mercy and all that stuff. Okay. Uh 14. How did the Lord himself show him whom he had chosen? He commanded the head of each tribe to take a rod, place it in the tabernacle. He declared that he would show his choice of the, of the head of the priesthood by causing one of the rod to bloom. And on the morrow, Aaron's rod bloomed and bore fruit. Let's read that. That's Exodus 17, 1. So let's go over here and read that. I have to go back. a long way, but we'll get there. Whoops. Ah, son of a gun. Sorry, guys. Tapping too fast. Hit the wrong button. There we go. I'm next is 36, so let's go. Slowly. Slowly, but surely. Okay. There we go. Let's read it. <clears throat> uh, here, oh my. This still ain't right for y'all. Y'all can't see the last part. I'm moving it over a little bit. Yeah, I think I got it. It's close enough. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. 
Wherefore the people did shy with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why shy with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wheretofore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? That's what they was crying about. So Moses cried back, saying, he, he starts, so they cried to him, so Moses cried to the Lord. And he says, What should I do to this people? They'd be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people, and take thee with the elders of Israel, and thy rod therewith thou shalt smoke the river, and take in thy hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock, and Horeb, thou shalt smite the rock, rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the Lord. Uh, I don't see that reference that I found here. I don't see that reference. Uh, let's go back there. Okay. And it says... That's what it says, Exodus 17, 1 through 10. Maybe I didn't read far enough. Let me read some more. And the name of the place was Massah and Meribah because of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us not? And the Amalek fought with them. Well, obviously, this note about an is it, is it uh, 17, 1 through 10, 10, it does not have about the rod blooming in here. So this must be a typo. I just read it to, to you. But what happened was, I'll tell you the story. It's like you read it. He had Moses and everybody from the 12 tribes of Israel they came they all placed their rod in a certain area and the next day God says the one's rod that will bloom this are dead rods now wood this will be the one and so the next day when they got up and they got down there Aaron's rod was the one that bloomed it was an almond rod and it bloomed it had leaves on it and stuff and everything it's just supernatural there was no life in the rod and uh I just want another point that this rod, uh, when uh, the Ark of the Covenant is going to be found later, it's supposed to be found later, uh, it has the two commandments in it, the two stones. It has a, a, a pot or a container for the, for the holyander seed, uh, the manna, and it's going to have roses, uh, Moses, I think, Aaron's rod in it that budded. So... I think that's all that's going to be in there. Oh, I think in the tabernacles, yeah. In the, in the Ark of the Covenant, the big Ark. And that's going to happen later. Okay, so let's get back. But I just want to say about this here where, where Moses strikes the rock there. I see. Uh, verse 6. Now you can see it. Okay, verse 6. It's he's talking about smiting the rock there. Let's look at these references because this eventually would be Moses' undoing of the promised land. Let's see what the reference says here. Oh, I hit the wrong one. There we go. Whoops. Okay. Okay, that doesn't explain it. I'll try this reference here. Now, this one here, uh, I don't like to see it right now, uh, but what happens is, the first time God tells Moses to strike the rock, 